I have been seeing a lot about the link to parasites and cancer and the use of ivermectin and fenbendazole. Uh, what are your thoughts about this, Alex? Yeah, um, so there are definitely, uh, especially in tropical countries, um, there's definitely a risk of uh, parasites. Um, they're a big thing. It's kind of interesting, actually. There is a type of immune pathway, I believe it's called immunoglobulin E, that is specific to bloodworms and, and things like that and um, things that are, are found in the tropics. And in northern hemispheres where we don't have those sort of parasites, that part of the immune system can be uh, responsible for allergies and having increased risks of allergies. Um, it's like the immune system has to be doing something. Um, but that's a little aside. As far as links to cancer, um, there's uh, liver flukes, there's blood flukes, um, there's uh, toxoplasma, gondi, there's tapeworms, there's a variety of different parasites that um, can cause cancer, mostly through inflammation. So what they do is they go into certain organs um, and then they, um, you know, release their metabolic, their poop, so to speak, metabolic byproducts into those organs and um, cause inflammation and infection. And that just basically can lead to cancers, um, altered DNA mutations and so on. There is uh, an actual, I did learn about an actual parasite um, in Africa, I believe, that actually causes cancer specifically. Um, and then the treatment for that is an antiparasitic because it gets rid of the worm. And as soon as the worm's gone, the cancer goes too. It's a very unique, rare type of cancer and very unique situation. What I'm seeing in regards to ivermectin and fenbendazole, um, I mean, these are very important antiparasitic medications. A lot of people want to know if they have an off-label application to cancer. Um, we see this all the time, um, where a off-label drug that's used for one thing um, is found to control a couple of the pathways involved in cancer. Yes, there's some research on this. Uh, is it something that is going to make a difference in pe most people's cancers? No, probably not. Um, definitely not in uh, northern hemispheres. I haven't seen any great data on these two drugs in regards to treating cancers. If you happen to be one of those folks who has a parasite and you might not know it, then it can make a huge difference. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe if it's something someone's thinking about using, maybe we want to get tested for those parasites. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, as opposed to just trying it just because. As always, I will refer you to PubMed for those of you who haven't heard me talk about it, pubmed.org, part of the National Institute of Health Research. It's the, it's not just specific to cancer. It's all kind of the most current peer review published science. And when I want to answer a question like this for somebody that I'm speaking to in one of the free strategy sessions or, you know, our online program, I will go there and I'll share my screen and we'll just search fenbendazole and your type of cancer. Um, if there, if it's been researched, it'll be there. Um, and then you'll be able to see where's the research at. So that might be something I do rather because we don't want to be black and white. Like every case is different. Every case is unique. So um, if there's still a question mark in anybody's head after hearing what Alex had to say, that might be what I do is go and type in those two different drugs, type in the type of cancer you have or just cancer. Where's the research at? Uh, what does it actually say? And then you'll be able to decide, is that worth my money and time? And should I put my, my hope in there? Or is there something else that I could be doing that would be more effective?